Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Well, let's stand to our feet and uh, welcome the Lord in this place, for he's worthy to be praised. Anybody glad about it? Does anybody agree that God is still worthy? Come on, let's sing it together. You know it. Say, praise him. Praise him. Come on. Praise him. Come on, sing it. Sing it, church. Praise him. Say, praise him. Say Jesus, Jesus, blessed Savior. Blessed Savior. Say He's worthy. He's worthy. Oh, say praise Him. Praise Him. Say praise Him. Praise Him. Come on, you know it. Say praise Him. Praise Him. We come to praise Him. Come on, sing it. Say, Jesus, what's his name? Jesus. Blessed Savior. Blessed Savior. Say, he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Say, from the rising of the sun. Come on, sing. From the rising of the sun. Until the going down of the same. Until the going down of the same. Come on, say, he's worthy. Come on, say Worthy. Jesus is worthy. Jesus is worthy. Come on, sing it like you know that he's worthy to he's be praised. Worthy to be praised. Come on, one more time. From the rising of the sun. From the rising of the sun. Unto the going down of the sun. Unto the going down of the sand. Come on, sing it out, church. Say he's worthy. He's worthy. How many know he Jesus is? is Come on, he's worthy to be he's praised. Worthy to be praised. Oh, come on. Now say glory. glory. We come to give him glory. Say it. Glory. Say it all to him. Give him glory. Give him glory. Say Jesus. Jesus. Blessed Savior. Blessed Sing second verse. Say, God is my rock. Say, God is my rock. Hope for salvation. Hope for salvation. Come on, say, a strong deliverer. A strong deliverer. deliverer. Yeah, sing it. In him will I trust. In him will I always trust. One more time. I feel good. Say, God. Is he anybody's rock today? Come on, sing. Say, hope for salvation. Hope for yes, Lord. Salvation. Ooh, uh, a strong deliverer. A strong yeah. Deliverer. Come on, say in him. In will I always run. Come on, what you gonna do? We gonna praise him. Praise him. Say praise. to be praised. Come on, one more time, family. Let's do it together. Say, from the rising of the sun. Come on, say. From the rising of the sun. Say, unto the going down of the sun. Unto the going down of the sun. The name of the Lord is worthy. Savior. Savior. Say he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Come on now, clap your hands like he's worthy and welcome him in. 
Come on, real quick, just clap your hands and welcome the Lord in. Come on. If he's really worthy, what is a worthy God worthy of? Come on. The Bible says that he's worthy to receive glory, honor, and power both now and forever. Come on. Come on. Who is the king of glory? He's the Lord God strong and mighty. He's indeed the Lord God mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, all ye gates. And the king of glory, he's coming in now. Come on. Come on. I said if you want him for real, if you need him to do some things on your behalf, clap your hands and open your mouth and just magnify the king of glory real quick. If you utter the words he's worthy to be praised, don't make a fool out of yourself. Give him what he deserves. Hallelujah. You are worthy, God. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Come on, give him glory, church. Amen. Don't stop giving him glory because of me. Amen. Give God a hand of praise. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are good. Welcome those near and far to the hybrid worship experience of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church of Fairfield in Sassoon, California. We welcome you. We welcome you online, and we welcome you in the audience. God is good, isn't he? Yes, he is. God is good. The choir just talked about how worthy he is. So we're going to keep that in mind as we worship today. Because blessed are those you choose to bring near to you in your courts. We are filled with the good things in your house, in your holy temple. Amen. 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 We come to the throne of grace to say prayers and lift up those that are in need and bereavement this week. We are praying for Sister Arena Jefferson and family in light of the passing of her husband, Brother Archie Jefferson. Brother Archie Jefferson is also the brother of Sister Diana Bell. So we lift her up and her family in prayer as well. His service will take place on Monday, April 15th, here at the Fairfield campus. We are also praying for Sister Virginia Ivory and family in light of the passing of her uncle, Herman Mondi Sr. We are also praying for Sister Thelma Moore, the mother of Sister Donna Broussard, Brother Charles Eddington, Sister Susie Kirk, and always, we are praying for our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Clay Bunley Jr., his entire family, as well as the Mount Calvary Baptist Church staff, officers, and you, the members. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to say thank you. Oh God, you've done it again. You woke us up this morning. You woke us up with the right mind activities of our limbs and a heart and a mind to come to your house and give you praise, honor, and glory. Thank you, oh God. This could have been our last day, but oh God, you woke us again on your day. So we come to give you praise, honor, and glory. Lord, we want to leave every other thing behind. Let it all just go onto our feet as we lift our hands in worship. And thank you for another day. Oh, God, we ask that you touch each person that's under the sound of my voice. Touch the preached word today. Let someone come saying, what must I do to be saved? We thank you, oh, God, for our mission is to lead the individuals into a dynamic experience with Jesus Christ and equip them for service to God and humanity. Let this worship equip us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We ask that you turn your attentions to the screens as we observe the ordinance of baptism. Good morning, Mount Calvary. 
is today our privilege and our, our pleasure to escort those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord to the ordinance and through the ordinance of baptism. We know that we come today to celebrate this ordinance, not that it saves these individuals, but these individuals come forward as an outward demonstration that they have been saved on the inside. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this day that you have made and this day that you have set aside for these six who shall come and be baptized today. We thank you, Lord, for new life in you. We thank you, Lord, that your word promises us that anyone who is in Christ is a new creature and that old things are passed away. We thank you, Lord, for the provision of salvation and your redemptive plan today. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to bear witness to those who have said yes to your way and yes to your will. Thank you, God, today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In obedience to the Lord's divine command and upon your public profession of faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of your life, I now baptize you, my sister, Aliyah Mahassan Denny, in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. In obedience to the Lord's divine command and upon your public profession of faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, I now baptize you, my brother, Charles William Austin, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. In obedience to the Lord's divine command and upon your public profession of faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of your life, I hereby baptize you, my sister, London Williams, yes. in the name of of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. In obedience to the Lord's divine command 
and upon your public profession of faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, I now baptize you, Malia Ajane Pringle, yes. in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. In obedience to the Lord's divine command and upon your public profession of faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of your life, I now baptize you, my brother, Michael Saul Esquita, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. On, you might as well jump to your feet right now and put your hands together. Anybody know that the Lord is mighty in the room? Come on. Can we praise him in the power of his might? I see some praisers. I see some worshipers across the room. You look good this morning. Tell somebody next to you and say, praise him with me. Say, glory and honor is to him. Say, glory and honor is to It's real simple. Repeat after me. Say it. Say, glory and Say glory and honor is due him. Say glory and honor is due him. Say it again. Say glory and honor is due him. Say glory and honor is due him. Say he's the source. He's the source. Strength for me. He's the healer. All disease. Say I run to him. Say he's the 
time. Jump to your feet and say, say all the glory. All the glory. Say all But if you look back over your life and think things over, I know you got a testimony. I said, if you just take a minute to reflect and say, you know what? Now that it's come to my realization, it was God that got me out of that. I might have got myself in, but I had a savior. And he's worthy. He's worthy. Receive glory. If you got the movement and the activity in your limbs, you ought to jump to your feet real quick and stop playing in God's face. Your legs work this morning. You ought to give him praise and say, God, I'm sorry for anything that I did. I'd be remiss if I come in your house and not give you glory. I'd be out of order if I come in your house and not give you praise. The least I could do since you let my hands work is clap them. The least I could do since he let my feet work is stomp them. The least I could do since he let my mouth work is open up my mouth. For the Bible says, let everything that have breath praise even. If you can't say nothing, just say hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, it's the highest praise, it'll help you. If you don't know what to say, just release a hallelujah in the atmosphere. And if you need a name to call, call the name that fixes everything. Jesus, hallelujah. Jesus, you ought to try it. Jesus, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. The praise team is so right. Give him all the glory. He deserves all the praise. Oh, bless his name. 
Mount Calvary, it is time to worship God and give it. Amen. Amen. Those of you who are online, you are welcome to give using our platforms, Givelify. You can also use our website. Those of you in the audiences, you are pleased asked to prepare your tithes and offerings in the envelopes as our urchers will be collecting those in just a moment. We want to give God more glory. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we say thank you, God, for all that you have given us. And, oh, God, we just thank you for the tithes and the offerings that we are preparing to give those that do not have it. Oh, God, bless them, for we know their hearts, and we know that you continue to bless them, and they will continue to give you glory, if nothing else. We ask, oh, God, that all of these things that are received this day continue to allow us to make this church a dynamic experience for everyone. And we say these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. We also are asking that you please pay attention to the news as our urchers come and receive the offering. If you win dominoes, chess, checkers, and board games, you are invited to join the Seniors Ministry for a game day and potluck fellowship. Join us on Saturday, April 20th from 11.30 a.m. until 3 o'clock p.m. in the fellowship hall. We invite all adults of all ages to join us. To sign up to attend or bring a dish, visit the table in the lobby. You can also email Reverend Adrian King at seniorministry at mcbcfs.org. We look forward to having a great time fellowshipping with you. Reminder, our health and wellness ministry has Stepping at the Mount, an exercise class that takes place every second and fourth Monday from 6.30 to 8 o'clock p.m. inside the fellowship hall. Please, no flip-flops or sandals, and bring a water bottle and a towel. As we prepare for our National Baby Shower, the Evangelism Missions Division is receiving donations beginning today. They ask for new and gender-neutral items, including onesies, hats, socks, blankets, diapers, car seats, high chairs, bibs, bottles, and other baby essentials. We will also accept gift cards and monetary donations. Our National Baby Shower will take place on Saturday, April 27th from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Pacific Time in our Fairfield Campus Sanctuary and on Zoom. Registration is required. To register, please visit our website and click on the National Baby Shower graphic or send an email to nbs at mcbcfs.org. Have you recently joined Mount Calvary and need to complete your new members orientation classes? If so, we invite you to join us for our six-week session beginning today, April 7th, and ending on May 26th during our Sunday school hour from 8.45 and 9.45 a.m. in room 108. The annual Young Adult Ministry Brunch is back, and we are excited to gather this Saturday, April 13th, for a day of fellowship, food, and fun. Anyone between the ages of 21 to 35 is welcome to attend and bring a friend. God has much in store for the year to come, and we are excited to share the when, where, and how it's going down. Bring your appetite as brunch will be served at 11.30 a.m. For more information, please email youngadults at mcbcfs.org. This has been your MCBC News. For more information, visit our website at www.mcbcfs.org. Even as we wrap up our giving portion of worship, slip your hands up to God and just tell him, God, I'm ready to receive a blessing from you. Come on, tell him again, I'm ready to receive a blessing from you. My hands are lifted up. My heart is ready to receive a blessing from you. Mm, a blessing from you. 
from you do. A blessing from you come on say it if you need it ask them tell them say my hands are lifted, my up. Hands are lifted up in total surrender my heart is ready, my heart is ready to, receive to receive a blessing from you a God blessing from you. Hey, a blessing from you One more time. My hands are lifted. My hands are lifted up. Yes, Lord. And my heart is ready. My heart is ready to, to receive, receive a blessing from you. A blessing from you. Ooh, yeah. Blessing from you. A blessing from you. Come on, one more time. Just say it like you mean it. Tell them, say, see my hands are lifted. My hands are lifted up. Yes, Lord. And my heart is ready, my heart is ready to, receive to receive a blessing from you, a God. Blessing from you. Hey, a blessing from you. A blessing from you. Say break me, make me, break me, make mold me, mold me, use me. My heart is, My ready, heart is ready to receive, to receive a blessing from you. A blessing from you. Come on, it's okay to let God do it. Surrender to Him and say, a blessing from you. A blessing God. from you. Yeah. Say break me, make me. Break me, make me. Mold me. Mold me. Heal me. My heart is ready. My heart is ready. Ready to receive. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. Come on, one more time. Stay there. Come on, say. Say break me, make me. Break me, make me. Mold me. Mold me. Use, me. Use me. My heart is ready. My heart is ready to receive, to receive a blessing from you. A blessing from yes. you. Yes. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. Yes. Listen, let me help you. Some of y'all looking at me funny. Those words, break me, make me, mold me, use me. I had to tell the last service too. Breaking sounds harsh. To be broken sounds violent, right? It sounds like something bad, right? But if you begin to understand that even broken pieces of clay in the hands of the potter can still be made something beautiful. You do understand, right? And so even if the pot is broken, even if God has to add a little heat to the situation, even if God has to add a little water to the situation and get your consistency back together, that's only the potter's way of making you back into something beautiful. And so hearing break me, make me, then mold me and use me, God. Come on, what do potters do? They gotta break stuff, then they make stuff, they mold it in a, to, into the creation, and then they use it, they have a use for it, right? And so now if you let that resonate in your spirit in that context, you'll understand better of what we're asking for the Lord to do 
Come on, come on, come on. And God requires worship. Come on. And he inhabits praise. Come on. So if you need some things shaken up in your life or if things are shaken up now and you need God to mold them back together, just say that with us, all right? It's real simple. Say, break me, make me say, break me, make me. Mold me. Mold me. Use me. Use me. My heart is ready. My heart is ready. To receive. To a blessing from you. A blessing from you. You get it now? Does it make more sense? Anybody? Say a blessing from you. Come on, let's a go. A blessing from you. Ooh, say, say, hey, break me, make me, yeah. I see your testimony rising up. A blessing from you. I need blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing. I need a blessing from you. Come on, ask him for what you need this morning. Come on, tell him. Say, break me, make me. from you. He says, shall I not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room to receive? We need. Come on, now just stretch your hands and surrender yourself one time. Say, my hands are lifted up. Come on, if you're going to say it, you got to do it. Say, my heart is ready. It's ready to receive. A blessing from you, God. Blessing after blessing after blessing, but I understand that it requires some missing. Give me blessing. Oh, one more time, ask him. Say, my hand are lifted up. Come on, stay right there. Say, my hand are lifted up. Come on, slip your hand up. Tell him, my hand is lifted up. but it's me, my hands. My hands are lifted because I need the blessing. Play me, say, my hands are lifted. Say, my heart is ready to receive blessings from you. Yes, Lord, whatever you have for me. Yeah, a blessing from you. Come on, say. A blessing from you. God, we're telling you what we need. A blessing. A blessing from you. Oh. For all to Jesus, I surrender all to Him, my free. 
we hear you tell them say I will we hear you sing and say love and trust him in his presence daily so we sing I Come on, if you're going to do it, slip your hands up and tell them, say, I surrender all. Yes, Lord. And all to thee. As a family, everybody say, see, I surrender, say, I surrender. Come on, sing it, church. Let them hear you this morning. See, I surrender all. Yes, Lord. I surrender all. I surrender my issues, my plans, my life. All to thee, my yes. My blessed Savior. Yes, Lord. Come on, do it, church. Let's do it. Say, I surrender. Oh. Good day, Mount Calvary. I greet you in the awesome and able name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because this is the day that the Lord has made and we should rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord called Mount Calvary. Good day, family and friends from around the globe to you, our virtual audience. We greet you, whether you're abroad or you're in the United States, locally, here, in the vicinity, in the state of California, and to you, brothers and sisters, here in the sanctuary. Isn't it a good day to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. If you're visiting with us virtually, we ask that if it's your very first time that you drop in the chat very first time, someone from Mount Calvary will reach out to you and greet you with the love of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, if you are here in the sanctuary and are visiting with us for the very first time, we ask that you stand at this time so that we can greet you. Praise God. I see you, my brother. I see the thing. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah, Mount Calvary. Praise God. Those of you seated around our guests, if you will greet them with a smile and with a fist bump and let them know that they are welcome here at Mount Calvary. On behalf of our senior pastor, we greet you, we welcome you, and don't let it be your last time. Amen? Amen. Amen. To our candidates that were baptized this morning, Mount Calvary, let's thank God for our candidates who were baptized this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise God for you giving your life to Christ. We say to each of you, the candidates, this is the best decision that you will ever make in your life. You now have two birth certificates, one when you were born into this world, and now today you received your spiritual baptismal certificate of your new birth in Christ. We pray that you treasure it, that you frame it, and that you keep it for a lifetime. We pray that God will continue to bless you as you mature and grow in Christ and become available for the Lord to use as you grow here at Mount Calvary. Mount Calvary family and friends, let's thank God for our candidates again this morning. And I say on behalf of our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Claven Lee Jr., welcome to Mount Calvary. Mount Calvary, welcome 
introduce you to our new candidates, and you are now a part of the family of God here at Mount Calvary. Amen? Amen. Would the family of those who were baptized today please stand so that we can acknowledge you as well. Praise God. Praise God. We thank God for you, and we pray that you will nurture them as well into the family of God as they grow and mature. Well, Mount Calvary, we have a preacher in the house this morning in the person of Dr. Laurent Grosvenor. He is no stranger to us. He has been here before. Dr. Grosvenor has been preaching since the age of nine. In November 2023, he successfully defended his Doctor of Ministry dissertation at Payne Theological Seminary and graduates this May 2024. Amen. Praise God. Pastor Grosvenor has contributed to several books and articles on ministry and population health. Since 2018, he has served as the senior pastor of Alpha Seventh-day Adventist Church in Austin, Texas. In addition to his pastoral duties, since 2021, Pastor Grosvenor has served as the chief diversity officer for the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation, which is a global population health research organization based at the University of Washington in Seattle. Pastor Grosvenor has a passion for counseling and seeing all people reach their full potential through Christ. He lives by the phrase, we ought not to strive to be known as great preachers, but we ought strive to be known as one whom we preach. When we preach, people realize how great the gospel is. Let us point in his direction at this time and say, Pastor Grosvenor, preach the word. Pastor Grosvenor, you are at, at home. Let the Lord use you. In Jesus' name, amen. Mount Calvary, Pastor Grosvenor, Pastor Grosvenor, Mount Calvary. Would you take the hand of the person on your left and your right, and might we pray? one with another. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you afresh for the total sufficiency of Jesus Christ. God, we thank you for life and life more abundantly. We thank you for joy unspeakable and full of glory. God, we thank you for a peace that passeth all human understanding. And we, God, we thank you for being a safe place where we can surrender our all unto you. God, we squeeze the hand of our neighbor a first time to let our neighbor know that they are sat beside someone who is praying for them. We squeeze our neighbor's hand a second time to let our neighbor know that the worst is behind them, but the best is yet ahead of them. And then we squeeze our neighbor's hand a third time to let our neighbor know that if they can feel my human touch, then they can feel God's touch. And so right now, God, would you touch in this place? Would you flex your muscles up and down these aisles? God, would you give some victory up in here today and remind us that you are large and in charge? God, I've prepared, but I need your power. I've studied, but I need your spirit. And so fall afresh on us again. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said together, amen. Well, drop those hands and give God some honor and praise in this place. This is the day the Lord has made. And we should rejoice and be glad in this day. And while you're thanking God for all he's doing, would you help me thank God for your pastor, your preacher, the one and the only Reverend Dr. Claiborne Lee junior come on you could do better than that help me thank god for 25 plus years quarter of a century plus a powerful ministry lord have mercy what a preacher what a person 
what a Christian. And then help me thank God for this praise team and band that have blessed us. Chris, Jessica, all of y'all just, just, just blessed us. And then look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I thank God for you too. Amen. I, as I was traveling here yesterday, someone asked me, Laurent, how, how did you get to know Dr. Lee? And, and you know, there are some people that come in your life that whenever you're asked that question, you just don't know how you all met. It just happened. You forgot. Uh, but this was not the case with Dr. Lee. I, I, I don't forget when I meet monumental people, right? And, uh, and there's this backstory. I remember I was in seminary 15 years ago or so. And uh, one of my closest friends, my peers, he said, Laurent, uh, let's skip class today. Uh, let's go down to Columbus, Ohio, uh, where Dr. William Curtis is preaching for Dr. Charles Booth. I said, okay, we're going to skip class. Anything to skip class. So we skipped class and went to real class. Amen. And uh, on my way down there, I called my mentor, Dr. Jerry Carter. And I said, hey, Doc, we're going down to uh, Columbus, Ohio. And so my conversation with him, because of his conversation with them, it allowed me and my friend uh, an audience with Dr. Boo. And so we're there in the office, and over the years, Dr. Boo and I developed a great relationship. One day, because I became his unofficial bag carrier, right? That's what young preachers do uh, with older preachers. We just carry their bags, right? And so one day, uh, Dr. Boo was doing something in some city, and he invited Dr. Lee to come preach for him at that meeting. And uh, he said, Laurent, I've got to introduce you to Dr. Lee. This was over 10 years ago now. And from that time until now, your pastor has opened doors for me that I could not even begin to articulate. And I was sharing with a couple of young pastors last week um, on the East Coast. Uh, whenever we talk about pastors on that side of 50 who are still reaching back to pastors on this side of 50, there's no conversation about that that can ever take place without mentioning the name of the Reverend Dr. Claiborne Lee Jr. So one more time, help me thank God for your pastor, the consistency of your pastor, and I pray God blesses him with even greater. If you have your Bible, Genesis chapter 24, um, while you're finding that, I, I must admit, I've been rediscovering my younger youth, and uh, I, I've been back on the soccer field, and I've been playing 90 minutes. I mean, I, I, I had not played 90 minutes in 10 years, and uh, it's my younger youth, right? And, uh, and, and I sustained a neck injury, and so I'm moving kind of funny. It, it, you know, you couldn't tell. Uh, for some, someone said to me, you couldn't tell first service, because uh, I was just moving around, but... Uh, but I felt it after first service, and I'm feeling it right now. So, uh, so if, you, if you stop praying, maybe I'll be okay. Genesis 24, and I want to pick up this narrative in, I think, verse 10. Um, powerful passage of scripture here. Uh, we pick up the narrative where uh, Abraham is now old, and he's advanced in years, and he's trying to find a son I trying to find a wife for his son. And he asks his servant to go and find him, him a daughter-in-law. And uh, he, he makes the servant swear an oath to him. And uh, we pick up this story now. He says, I'm going to send you. Angels are going to go before you. But I need you to go and do this job for me. And so we pick up the story here in verse 10. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible, Genesis 24, verse 10. Here's what the Bible says. Then the servant took 10 of his master's camels and departed, for all his master's goods were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia, to the city of Nahor. And he made his camels kneel down outside the city by a well of water at evening time, the time when women go out to draw water. Then he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, please give me success this day and show kindness to my master Abraham. Behold, here I stand by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. 
Now let it be that the young woman to whom I say, please let down your pitcher that I may drink, and she says, drink, and I will also give your camels a drink, let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. And by this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. And it happened before he had finished speaking that behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with her picture on her shoulder. Now the young woman was very beautiful to behold, a virgin. No man had known her. And she went down to the well, filled her pitcher, and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Please let me drink a little water from your pitcher. So she said, Drink, my lord. Then she quickly let down her pitcher down to her hand and gave him a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. Then she quickly emptied her pitcher into the trough, ran back to the well to draw water, and drew for all his camels. And the man, wondering at her, remained silent so as to know whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. So it was when the camels had finished drinking that the man took a golden nose ring weighing half a shekel and two bracelets for her wrists weighing ten shekels of gold and said, Whose daughter are you? Tell me, please, is there room in your father's house for us to lodge? So she said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, Milcah's son, whom she bore Nahor. Moreover, she said to him, We have both straw and feed enough and room to lodge. Then the man bowed down his head and worshiped the Lord. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated even in the presence of the Lord. I, I want to preach uh, for a few moments on today. God, make me successful. Turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor. God make me successful. Turn to your other neighbor. Say, other neighbor. Oh, other neighbor. I want God to make me successful. Tap yourself on the chest and say, self. Oh, self. I need a little success in my life. Amen. Verse 12. Verse 12. Then he said, oh, Lord, God of my master Abraham, please give me success this day. God make me successful. The book of Genesis, often revered for its profound narratives and theological depth, serves as a foundational text in the Old Testament, aimed at illustrating the beginnings of God's interaction with humanity and his plan for redemptive rhythms. That as we consider the plan of salvation, it is true that God had salvation on his mind before the beginning began. A cursory reading of the book of Genesis might suggest it is just primarily a collection of ancient stories. However, a deeper examination of Genesis reveals a central theme. God's redemptive rhythm demonstrates his intimate involvement in the lives of his chosen people. This is particularly evident in the story of Abraham and his family. Genesis adopts a persuasive approach, an illustrative approach, showcasing through stories contained therein the faithfulness and the superiority of God's plans and promises. This is vividly seen in the story of Abraham, particularly when he seeks a wife for his son Isaac. The Genesis narrative therefore urges its readers to recognize that the answer to life's deepest questions and the fulfillment of God's highest promises are found when you take time to trust the plan of God. 
from the lush green of the Eden to the arid expense of the Negev, from the heights of joy in creation to the depths of despair in the flood, from God coming to walk and talk with humans, trying to, to, trying to build cities in the sky. Genesis presents a panorama of human experience that if we are honest, it mirrors our own life today. And here, close to the middle of the book, Genesis 24, we see a servant who we believe, scholars believe to be Eleazar, who is now seeking a bride for his master's son. What an outstanding responsibility. What enormity of trust that his leader is trusting him with not just finding a spouse, but to find a person that would be pivotal, necessary, and influential in continuing the line that produces Jesus the Christ. And, and, and what arrested my attention, Ashlyn, what uh, called me, called out to me in this chapter, what jumped out at me and what made my spirit leap was this singular verse in which the servant, while progressing someone else's request, while contributing to someone else's family, while building someone else's dream, while building someone else's home, while furthering someone else's ambition, he does not treat it lightly. He does not treat it as a fool's errand, but he takes it so seriously that he takes the time to ask God for success. God, I wish I had a witness here. And in this ancient narrative, we see a reflection of our own journey marked by moments of doubt and decisions of faith because just as the servant embarked on a mission not knowing where it would lead but trusting in the Lord's direction, so too are we called to step out in faith, trusting in the God who has not just authored the story of Genesis but who has already authored the story of our lives and we ought to trust that he has what we need to make our endeavors a success. And in, and in the intricate dance of life's decisions, we often find ourselves poised between two tectonic plates. It is the stillness of prayerful waiting on this side, and it is the motion of active seeking on this side. And this, this delicate balance is vividly portrayed in the journey of Abraham's servant is in Genesis chapter 24. He's, he's trying to find a wife for his master's son, Isaac. But but here's what encourages me in the text. He he seeks guidance for the steps ahead. Yeah, he has faith, but his faith is not a passive faith. His, his prayer does not stop him from stepping. No, his prayer propels him forward. And so with each step he makes toward Mesopotamia, he embodies a trust in God's plan. He prepares, he plans, and he moves, all while his heart remain anchored in a state of expectation, waiting for a sign from God. And I came from Austin today to raise a homiletical question. How can we balance prayerful waiting with active seeking in our decisions. And here's why I raise the question, Mount Calvary, because some of us lean heavy on the side of pray and do nothing, and then there are others that lean heavy on the side of doing everything and never taking the time to ask God if we're doing the right thing. And what we see with this servant is a perfect blend of this Sitzenleben, this setting in life that we all find ourselves in and through. And the first move we see in the text is that there is a strange request. Someone shout a strange request. 
uh, Sarah, Abram's wife, has died. She's been interred, and now Abraham is sensing his own mortality. He's sensing his own mortality because of his great, 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 great grandparents, Adam and Eve. He knows that he won't be around forever. He knows that eternal life on this side of the Jordan has been forfeited. He is getting ready to fold up his tent and move upstairs. But before he goes, he has a responsibility to make sure his son, his 40-year-old son, finds a wife. Not just any wife, not just any woman, but she's got to, he's got to find a good woman. And so monumental is this moment that Abraham summons his servant to make a vow. And Abraham says, hey, Eliezer, put your hand underneath my, th my thigh and swear to me that you will go and find my son a wife. This is a strange request because a serious oath is made. And there is this nuance, everybody, that Abraham trusted the servant enough to give him this assignment. Can I put a parenthetical and homiletical pit stop right here? I, 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 I told God to give me the resolve in 2024 to stop requesting things from people I don't trust. And I think the problem with a whole lot of us is that we expect too much from little people. We, we ask too much from people. It's not that you're asking the wrong things. No, it is that not everyone has the capacity to deal with you. You, you are a 10-gallon person, and you trying to hang out with one-gallon people. And can I tell you, when you try and pour your 10 gallons into a one-gallon person, they are overwhelmed. They are mismanaging you. It doesn't mean mean they are bad. It doesn't mean they are evil. It just means they're one gallon and you're ten. You, you've got to start asking God to put people in your life that have the capacity to deal with you. Do I have a witness here? Uh, I've seen marriages failed because of no trust. I've seen friendships dissipated because of no trust. Jobs have been lost because of no trust. Personal growth is hindered because of no trust. You will never live an impactful life when you have nobody you can trust and when nobody trusts you. Do I have a witness here? Uh, so uh, Abraham trusts Eliezer. Here it is. Why, why does he trust Eliezer? He trusts Eliezer, Reverend King, because Eliezer has never tried to usurp his authority. And here's why I say this. Eliezer has been with, Ab with Abraham since before Isaac was born. Because, because, because you, you may remember when, when Abraham was struggling to have a son, he says, God, is Eleazar my servant going to be my inheritor? And so Eleazar has been on the scene before Isaac comes. That, but, but so here now with Eleazar, there is this, there is this longevity. Let the church shout longevity. And, and I know some of us don't like the word longevity because because some of y'all change best friends like you change clothes. Every year you got a new boo. Every wedding invitation you take in someone new. Can I tell you there is something powerful and profound in longevity. Someone shout longevity. So and so Abraham gives now this, this taxonomy of the request. He says, he says to his, his servant, I've got this pro covenantal promise from God. I need to go find me a daughter-in-law, but don't get a Canaanite. Get a wife from my own people. I'm living in the region, but I'm not of the region. So don't get a wife from around the corner, up the block, down the street. <laughs> I, I, I'm here not because I really want to be here, but I'm here 
because God told me to be here. Now, now there, there are some folk that will get mad. I ain't talking about y'all. I'm talking about my church. There are some folk that will get mad and leave a church or start coming once a quarter because they don't agree with every decision that was made. But here's what challenges me. You don't agree with everything at work, but you still go. Do I have a witness here? You don't agree. In fact, no, let me, let me include myself in this. We don't agree with everything our homeowners association does, but we still got to pay. <laughs> Do we have a witness here? And you know, I came to the realization that some folk crave influence in church because that's the only place they can have a little bit of power. And I realized the worst thing you can give to some church folk is a title, a set of keys, a microphone, a flashlight, a badge, a fob, access, a seat at the me do I have a witness here because there are some people that will abuse their authority and start thinking they own the doggone place I ain't talking about y'all talking about my church but no, Eleazar, he's been around for a long time, but Eleazar realizes that he is the servant. He, he's there to help, and he's there to assist, and, and, and he doesn't quite understand it, so he, 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 he asks for some clarity. He wonders, why can't Isaac go? And it's as if, I'm re reading between the lines here, it's as if Abraham says to his servant, I I'm not going to send my son because my son doesn't yet have the maturity to go to a place, and if he likes it, he may not come back. He may see something he likes, thinks the grass is greener on the other side, and it's going to mess up the plan of God because God said, we going to be here. And so, and so my son, my son may not have the maturity. And, he, and here's what I think is powerful here. Parents, I know you manage a lot. Work is challenging. But spend enough time around your children to know them to know their habits, to know their thought process, to know when they're struggling, to know when they sound off, to know when not everything is okay. Do I have a witness here? And so, and so Abe says to Eleazar, you go on my son's behalf. Go and find a wife for my son. And here's what he says. I think it's somewhere around verse 8 there. Uh, he says, uh, I'm sending you, but don't be dismayed because an angel is going to go before you. Okay, that was 10 of y'all. Let me try it one more time. He says, you don't have to be afraid because there's an angel that's going to go before you. Y'all still not getting this? He says, you don't have to fear because an angel is going to go before you. Now, I know that's easy to pass over, but these are the last re recorded words of Abraham. And I want you to know today that his last recorded words emphasize that even though this is a strange strange request. Uh, Eleazar doesn't have to do this alone. An angel is going to go before you, which means God is involved. And I know we're in 2024 and folk don't want to come to church anymore, but I'm still glad in 2024 that angels are real. Yes, Lord. In 2024, I don't need to manipulate my way in the door. I don't need to lie my way in the door. Angels are going before me to open up the door. Do I have a witness here? And, and I know, I know we live in the postmodern era and we like to thank the universe, but can I tell you, it was not the universe. It was an angel that blessed your life. Do I have a witness here? In fact, one author says that at night when you are sleeping, there are demons of darkness trying to take you out, trying to kill you in your sleep, trying to kill your children and kill your grandchildren children but every morning you wake up every morning your household wakes up it means that an angel of light has beat 
that the angel of darkness, God, I wish I had a witness in here that could testify all night, all day, I got angels watching over me. So, 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 uh, th there's this strange request, and part of the reason why it's a strange request uh, is because it shows that God doesn't, hear me out here, God doesn't just work by rearranging molecules, by making the sun stand still, by healing the sick, by raising the dead, or by parting rivers. There are far more times that God operates in the sphere of the normal. And, 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 and if you are a miracle junkie and think God only works in a flash, you'll miss the daily moves of God in the ordinary. Lord have mercy. Every step I take, it is ordinary, but it's God. Every breath I breathe, it is ordinary, but it's God. Every paycheck I receive, it's ordinary, but it's God. Every time I arrive at my destination, it is ordinary, but it's God. Every time I'm not putting socks on my hands or gloves on my feet, it is ordinary, but it is God. Yes, Lord. And I'm not saying God is ordinary, but what I am saying is that God is as powerful in miraculous moments as he is in ordinary moments. Do I have a witness here? So God brings his wife, God brings Isaac a wife through normal events, the delays, the customs, the stresses, the chance meetings. And sometimes it is strange requests and strange moments and mysterious ways that open the door for God to do something we've never seen him do before. So there's this strange request. And it now leads to the second move in the text. It leads to a sincere supplication. The servant, this faithful servant, takes with him 10 camels. Not his camels. He don't own any camels. He loads the camels with gifts and good things. Not his gifts and good things. He don't own gifts and good things. And he makes this 500-mile journey. Someone shout 500. He makes this 500-mile journey from the region of Canaan. This journey would have taken several weeks. There's no train. There's no Uber. There's no lift. Uh, uh, he, he has two choices. He can walk it or he can camel hump it. And so this long journey underscores the commitment and faith of Abraham's servant in fulfilling the task. And as he gets to a place where he and the camels have a water break, he, verse 11, he whispers a prayer in the evening. And it just so happens that this is the time that the women go out to draw water for the house. And, and, and he prays this, this, this prayer of success. The prayer of success recognizes that I can only do so much, that I can only go so far, that I can only take it so high. But Jehovah is the only one that can ensure the metaphorical 500 miles that you have been traveling, that your labor is not in vain. So, so time, women go out to draw water. Now here's what's crazy. An hour earlier, he would have been too soon. An hour later, he would have been too late. But when angels go before you, wish I had a church in here. When, when angels go before you, you'll be in the right place at the right time to receive a blessing from the Lord. Do I have a witness here? And, and, he, and he, he sincerely asked God for something that heretofore I'd never paid attention to. Perhaps you'd never paid attention to it either. He, he asks God for success. 
And he doesn't just ask God for success. He asks God for success today. Let me try that one more time. He, he, he asks God for success today. Now, this is what discombobulated me uh, because this is not success for him. This is not going to bless him. This is not going to benefit him. He, he's seeking success from the Lord in the service of somebody else. Now, now, now here it is. You, you, you have to, you have to uh, uh, understand that the fact he asks for success shows he understands the magnitude of his assignment. You, you've got to be careful how you handle who God has assigned to lead you. Do we have a witness here? I've seen people die who mistreated their leader. I, I've seen people go bankrupt who mistreated their leader. That, 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 that is true. On the other side, leaders, many of you are leaders in here, must be careful how they treat the people around them. Because leaders, while they may be the face, they aren't the only force. The leader, Abraham, could not do it by himself. Abraham could not travel. He needed Eleazar. Just because Eleazar was lower does not mean he was lesser in the eyes of God. Do I have a witness here? God can hear the leader's prayer just like he can hear the servant's prayer. I wish I had a witness here. Uh, and so, so this, 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 God, this is a good sermon. The, 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 the servant in Genesis 24 prays sincerely for guidance, but his sincere prayer is then coupled with, next move in the passage, it's then coupled with strategic steps. Someone shout strategic steps. Now, 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 some of y'all don't, don't believe in strategy, but, but, it, but it's biblical. It, it, it's biblical because faith without works is dead. And, and strategic planning is essential even when we trust in divine guidance. To, to those of you that work in corporate, legal, medical, business, city, county, education, music, healthcare, finance, hospitality, transportation, you understand the strategy is crucial for success. And this, this journey of Abraham's servant in Genesis 24, where he seeks a wife for Isaac, can be likened to a well-known strategy model in the modern business and decision-making world. This is the first smart goal we see in the Bible. So some of y'all know what smart goals is. Uh, if you want to be successful and create proper goals for you, yourself, you ought to utilize SMART goals. Someone shout SMART goals. Specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. Let, 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 let's break it down because I don't want you to accuse me of making things up. Let's break it down. Let's see. Y'all heard that before, right? Uh, let, let's... <laughs> I'm sorry, I just slipped out. Uh, well, for real, I don't want you to accuse me of making it up, right? Uh, so, so, so um, I want to lose weight. That's a goal, but it ain't a smart goal. I want to save $24,000 by next year, April. It's a goal, but it ain't a smart goal. Here it is. I want to lose 10 pounds through exercising three times a week and only eating cake on Sundays. That's a smart goal, y'all. <laughs> I want to save $24,000 by ensuring I save $2,000 each month by April next year. That's a smart goal. Smart goals are, are specific. The servant has a clear and specific 
task to find a wife for Isaac from Abraham's relative in his homeland. He knows exactly what his mission is, which is a key aspect in setting smart goals. Not only is it specific, but it is measurable. The servant sets up this way to measure the success of his goal. He prays to God for a sign. He asks that the woman who offers water to him and his camels be the one that God chose for Isaac. It is specific. It is measurable. But it's also achievable because while this is a challenging task, it is achievable because the Bible says he takes 10 camels and he takes some valuable gifts showing that he was well prepared and equipped for the mission, thereby increasing the likelihood of achieving his goal. It is specific, it is measurable, it is achievable, but it's also relevant because the goal was highly relevant to the servant's role and to Abraham's desire to find a wife from his own kin for his son in line with the customs and the values and in line with God's promise. It is specific, it is measurable, it is achievable, and it's also relevant. It is, time, it is relevant and it's time bound because although the narrative early on doesn't specify a time, later on her family tried to delay him a little bit and he says, no, I got to go and I got to go right now. All I'm trying to tell you is that this servant Eleazar has a smart goal and by applying a smart goals framework to the servant's approach, it demonstrates that he has a well-planned strategy because success doesn't just happen. Acquisition doesn't just happen. Nobody just owes you anything. Do I have a witness here? And some people are missing the mark and they have fallen behind or they have stayed stagnant because if you fail to plan, you automatically plan to fail. Goals and vision boards are great, but strategy is the journey you take to get there. Strat strategy doesn't have to be complex, no. And so this servant takes these strategic steps. And once he has the strategy in place, he begins to look for signs and signals. Eleazar is looking for a woman who demonstrates extraordinary kindness and generosity. He's looking for a woman who is willing to serve. These are qualities which were seen as indicative of a good match. Can I tell you something? You cannot ask God for a sign and then not look. Some of y'all ask God and then close your eyes. No, no, no. You've got to watch and pray. You've got to pray and watch. And so the servant is paying attention. He's set the parameters of the test, but then he watches. Because success and vigilance are siblings. Do I have a witness here? Praying for direction is necessary, but when you miss turnings, when you miss exits, when you miss the highway, when you miss the gas station, it can be catastrophic to your success. God, I wish I had a witness here. You got you to gotta, you gotta pay attention. Pay attention to how people treat other people. Pay attention to how people carry themselves. Pay, pay attention to people's demeanor. Pay attention to how much or how little they keep their word. Because realistically, can I tell you, while, 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 while this, this, this woman did not know what was going on, someone somewhere was watching her because you never know who is watching watching you. You never know who's watching you carry what you carry. And so whatever you carry, you ought to carry it with grace. You ought to carry it with class because you never know who is watching you. Do I have a witness here? And once you pay attention to signs and signals, here's final move, you will receive a successful outcome. The Bible says uh, he prays this prayer of success. He relies on prayer, and after prayer, he sees Rebecca, beautiful Rebecca, never been married before Rebecca, carrying this load on her shoulders, and she's carrying it with grace and with class. 
And she does exactly what Eleazar prays for. She gives him some water, and then she says, I'll give your camels some water until they've had enough. And if they're still thirsty, I'll go get some more for them. Can I tell you something? She met the test, y'all. <laughs> she, 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 she met the test, y'all. And here's what Eleazar does. Eleazar, when Rebecca consents to come back with him, Eleazar gives God some glory. Because when God shows you revelation, when you are successful, don't forget who made it happen. Don't forget who kept the thief from stealing. Don't forget who kept the rust from corroding. Don't forget who kept the moth from destroying our garment of praise. It was God and God alone. Do I have a witness here? Can I tell you, not every day will be a success, but like Jesus, you can be deemed successful one day, but deemed a failure the next day. But if you stay in God's hand, you will get the success you you are praying for. I'm through when I tell you this. I remember some time ago, uh, I, I, was, I was traveling from somewhere and I did some laundry when I got to the house. And, and after I took the laundry out of my washing machine, I, I then put it on the, in the drying machine. And, and anyone that knows anything about me, I, I love to do household chores. I'll wash the dishes. I'll clean. I'll vacuum. I'll clean the bathroom, all that. There's one household chore I don't like doing, and that is for folding clothes, y'all. I, I despise folding clothes. To this day, I still live off the top of the drying machine. Do I have a witness here? Uh, uh, and, so, and so I'm looking for a pair of shorts on the top of my drying machine, and uh, I'm looking for these shorts. I get these shorts, and the shorts feel a little heavier than normal. I put my hand in my shorts, and I realize it's one of the fobs to my vehicle. I said, Lord, have mercy. This fob done been in the the washing machine. It's been in the dry machine. I said, Lord, this fob is not about to work. So I, I called the dealership. I said, I need a new fob. My fob has been compromised. And you know what they said? They said, that's fine. A new fob is going to cost you $799.83. You know what I said? The devil is a liar. And God bless you. I hung the phone up, and I said, what am I going to do? So I said, okay, I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to buy me a new battery. Uh, I don't think it's going to work because the internal uh, motherboard, I think, has been compromised. But, but God says, go and buy a battery, and when you get back home, when you get to the garage, just uh, put the fob in your hand and see if it works. And, and so I'm praying. I'm saying, Lord, if you let this work, I ain't never going to sin again. Lord, if you let this work, I ain't never going to cuss them out again. Lord, if you let this work, I'll I'll never go where I shouldn't go again. Come on, y'all give me some grace. I've been preaching since I was nine years old, which means I did all my sinning as a preacher. And so I said, Lord, I ain't never, y'all, yeah, yeah. So I said, Lord, I ain't never going to do this again. Can I tell y'all something? I went to my garage. I put that fob in my hand, and I heard my car go beep, beep. I said, I said, praise the Lord. I felt a quickening in my spirit. And then the Lord reminded me of something. And the Lord reminded me that no matter where you go, you just need to stay in the Lord's hand. You see, that fob had been in the washing machine. It had been in the drying machine, which means it had been through the water. Yes, sir. It had been through the flood. It had been through the fire. But when I put it in my hand, it still worked. Good afternoon, y'all. And may the Lord bless you real good. But is there anybody in Mount Calvary that could say I'm staying in the Lord's hands? When you stay in the Lord's hands, success shall be yours. When you stay in the Lord's hands, you can trample on scorpions. When you stay in the Lord's hands, you can do what you never thought you could do. When you stay in the Lord's hands, you can go where you never thought you could go. Do I have a witness here who could clap their hands and say I'm staying in the Lord's hands? He's got the whole world in his hand. He got you and me 
in his hand. He got us all in his hand. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather put my life in the hand of God than in the hand of my own hand. Do I have a witness here who can open up their mouth and testify? He's got good hands. Yeah, yeah. And so, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thy hand from me, whither shall I go? Do I have a witness? that can open up their mouth and say, I've been through the fire. I've been through the flood. I've been through temptation. I've been through trials. I've been through trauma. I've been through deceit. I've been through pain. I've been through mental health challenges. I've been through people lying on me. But I have a God. I said, I have a God. Do I have a witness here who could testify that I have a God who I can testify that sooner or later, sooner or later, sooner or later, it'll turn, it'll turn, it'll turn, it'll turn. It'll turn in my favor. It's turning around for me. Who am I preaching to in the house of God that can testify? It's turning around for me. I failed yesterday. I failed last week. I failed last year. But I'm praying, God, give me success. Today, 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 hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We serve a God that can give you success from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. He's a worthy. He's a worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 Lift your hands. Raise your voice and say, thank you, God, for success. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. think about where I should have been, where I could have been. Single parent home, two bedroom house, didn't have much money, didn't go on three vacations a year, had some cheap sneakers. When I think about where I should have been, but when I think about where I am, I may not have it all, but I got more, I got more than I deserve. I got more than I ever expected. Yeah, yeah, hallelujah, yeah. If you're not already standing, stand to your feet. I'm encouraged today by this one verse. 
God, give me success today. Today. And I don't know what failures are challenging your life right now, but we serve a God who can give you victory even in your weak and fractured moments. God is turning around some stuff. He's, he's orchestrating some stuff. And God has the power to submit celestial solutions to your terrestrial problems. I think it's amazing that when he finished praying for success, he saw the answer that he was looking for. And he could tell, Eliezer can testify, God's done more than I've ever expected. He's done more, more, more. Someone shout more. He's done more than I ever expected. He's turning things around in my favor. He's turning things right side up. He's paying bills. He's healing bodies. He's, he's done more than I ever expected. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so the doors of the church are open today. I'm inviting you into relationship with the God of success. The God of your success. And so perhaps on today, you're looking for a church home. You're saying, Pastor Grosvenor, I, I, I'm looking for a church home. I need God to do something in my life. If you fit into that category, you're saying, Pastor, I'm looking for a church home. I, I need to be in relationship with Jesus the Christ. I, I've come. I'm, I'm a visitor, but I need to transition from visitor status to member status. If you fit into that category, do me a favor. I want you to slip your hand up. I want to say a word of prayer for you. You're saying, I'm, 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 I want to transition from visitor to member. Just slip your hand up real high. I want to say a special word of prayer for you. God bless you, my brother. I see your hand. Do me a favor. Slip out of your seat. Come down. Shake my hand. Come on, my brother. Come down. Shake my hand. I want to shake your hand, and I want to pray for you. Come on. Let's praise God as they start coming. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. Come on, my brother. I see you. We'll wait for you. Yeah, come on, come on. Come on. He's done more. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Listen, come on. They're still coming. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on. Come on, Mount Calvary will receive you. Dr. Lee, our pastor, will receive you. God will receive you. Come on, come on. God bless you. Yeah, yeah. Come on, you're saying on today, I, 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 I want God to do something in my life. Come on, I see you, my sister. Come on, I'll wait for you. Come on, let's bless the Lord for her. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, there's still time. You may be watching online. This is your moment too. This is your moment too. You can be a part of this too. Here's what you can do. If you are watching in the cyber sanctuary, you can be a part of this wave, this movement too, by just opening up your, the app on your email, your email app, and e email join at mc bcfs.org email join at mcbcfs.org I tell you there's folk waiting to hear from you God has already assigned people in this ministry to, to meet your need in Jesus name and the whole church said amen Father in the name of Jesus we thank you for these individuals that have come God, we thank you for their life. We thank you for you bringing them to this moment. God, we ask even now that you would seal their decision in the name of Jesus. God, we ask even now that you would give them what they stand in need of. 
Lord, there are some individuals that are at home watching online. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would go by their room, go by their car, go by their dormitory, go by their bed, go by their kitchen, go by their car, wherever they are, God, go by their, you know, come by here, Lord, come by here. Someone needs you, Lord, come by here. And God, we know the devil is mad today because we have raided the camp of the enemy and we've stolen from the camp of the enemy. But God, we thank you that even though the enemy is mad, there are angels that are rejoicing in heaven because souls have come saying, what must I do to be saved in the name of Jesus? And so, God, what I have failed to ask for in my humanity, fail not to grant in your divinity. We pray these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and all God's people said together, amen. Mount Calvary, would you help me thank God for those that have walked for Christ and walk for church. Hold on, we're going to have some further instruction. God bless you. I love you, Mount Calvary. May the peace of God be yours. Praise God, Mount Calvary. We have these persons that have come forward based on their Christian experience. Our counselors will take them in the back and provide further information to them so that we can bring them into the family of Mount Calvary. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for these that have come. On behalf of our senior pastor, Dr. Claiborne Lee Jr., we welcome you to Mount Calvary. Amen. Praise God. Follow our counselors. Dr. Grobner, bless God for you. <laughs> thank you for that word. We truly thank God for the message and the messenger. And we pray God's blessings on you, your ministry, and your travels back to your destination again. Thank you from the bottom of our house. Tomorrow, Calvary, let's give God a hand praise for Dr. Grosvenor for the word that came forth on today. Amen. Bless God. Hallelujah. Again, we want to congratulate our candidates and by way of pastoral emphases this morning from our pastor, Dr. Lee wants the entire church to know that he is feeling great. After a week of rest, he and the staff will be back in the office this week. Dr. Lee will be teaching Bible study on Tuesday, and Lord willing, he will be preaching next Sunday. Amen. This Thursday night at 7 p.m., Dr. Lee will be sharing with the Bay Valley District for their annual conference. The host church is Allen Chapel, Sacramento. Those of us that can and will journey to Sacramento to support him, we ask that you do so. Let us stand to receive our benediction. Let us elevate our hands. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all both now and forevermore, and all God's people said, 
Amen. Pastor Grobner will come down to shake hands at the door.